So if you've been following the, uh, well, the story with expat John uh, there with Paul, old dog. I'll give you links to his channel, uh, the videos on this, in case you, you're just kind of out of the loop or missed something. But uh, in a nutshell, uh, an expat that Paul had met about a little over a year ago, he ran into him again and found that he had, you know, kind of fallen on hard times, this guy John. And uh, so that, that got the ball rolling uh, for an interview, and then uh, subsequently some guys came forward to help this guy John resolve his problems. Now, and again, in a nutshell, what happened was this guy John went to the Philippines to live permanently, had about $30,000 in his bank account, and had this plan to make that money last until he got onto Social Security. Now, that was going to give him a budget of roughly $675 or so uh, per month. Now, um, what I wanted to do today is look at the full arc of the uh, experience that John had after running into this problems that he had and getting some help and see what we can learn from it as just sort of a case study. You know, kind of like I've always said, uh, the only thing better than learning from your mistakes is learn from someone else's mistakes. Now the first thing, it should almost go without saying, but I ran into a guy back in 2012, in fact my first few months living in the Philippines, who made the same mistake of going to the Philippines with a lump sum of money to live on, which sounds like a lot of money, and you're thinking, well, gee, everything's you know so much cheaper in the Philippines, it's just going to last indefinitely. And that's a huge mistake to make when you've got no income. The guy that I ran into in 2012 was a retired policeman. Uh, he was still a young guy, and I guess retired early. I don't know if he got a like some kind of pension or severance, but in his case, he had about $50,000, which he thought was going to last him quite a while. Well, by the time I met him, very similar to John's story, he ran out of money. He ran into Filipinas. He, you know, got a girl pregnant. Uh, just one thing after another, by the time I ran into him, he was basically uh, homeless. You know, he uh, he did have a computer, but the, the Filipina he was with, they got into an argument, and she broke the computer, and that was the end of his chance to actually earn any money at all. So now in John's situation, again, what we can learn is don't go to the Philippines with a lump sum thinking that it's going to just last indefinitely. And even if he had stuck to his plan, uh, it didn't account for emergencies. Had he gotten a really bad toothache or gotten hurt, needed hospital care, that, that expense would have cut into his savings and would diminish the amount of time that money is going to last. If you're going to go to the Philippines, even if you have a lump sum to work with, you need some kind of income. Had he had an income of even $350 a month, it would have made that money last twice as long. Now the next thing, uh, I talked about it a long time ago, but it's relevant here, so, and it is the, 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 it's the reality that a guy can go to the Philippines with a plan that he's got X amount of money he's going to live on, you know, what I call the micro budget of, say, under $700 a month, and he's going to make it work, he's going to eat simple food, he's not going to be going, staying to, at resorts, he's not going to be flashy, he's just going to live a simple retired life. Well, that's all fine and good until you meet a Filipina that you fall in love with. Because now your expenses and your liabilities just doubled. And if she's got kids, well then you have to expand it now to that. Because now it's not just a matter if you get a toothache or you get hurt. It's you, her, and these kids. You know, again, we're presuming that this is a relationship. If you care about her and she's got a really bad toothache, then you're going to want to get her some, some dental work done. And same thing, if her kid falls down and cuts his hand open on a piece of glass, well, you can't just ignore that. It's going to have to be disinfected and treated and, you know, again, medical costs. So um, the plan falls apart when it's almost inevitable. It, you can almost plan on it. You're going to meet a Filipina you know, fall in love, you're going to, you know, you're going to be wanting to take care of her, but now your expenses have gone from a single man budget to single guy with a girlfriend or possibly with kids. The next thing to be learned is that, again, in John's case, he started out with $30,000, 
and started making some bad purchases, uh, spending money, again, the girlfriend and all that. The, the big wrench that came in with him is that she became pregnant. Not only did she become pregnant, she had twins. So again, these sort of unexpected things, um, you know, if you're going to be in a relationship, then use protection or have a vasectomy. Otherwise, you kind of should expect what's going to happen if you're intimate with a woman and on a regular basis, there's going to be a baby, maybe two. So again, if, you, if you've got this plan that you're going to live on this micro budget and, and hopefully you're not just living on that, you know, you're earning some kind of money. The other thing that's going to throw a big wrench in the plan is going to be an unplanned pregnancy. Now another thing that we can learn from John's experience is that having started with about $30,000, you should have a rule kind of like etched in the back of your brain, kind of like a backup program that tells you that when you get down to the point that you're down to your last $3,000 or so, you simply need to go back home go back to your home country while you can still afford it to get on a plane get back rent a car get an apartment and get get some income happening in your own country unfortunately uh, and this happens in Thailand ha it happens in the Philippines I've seen it over the years guys will just cling to the dream and they will go below that three three thousand dollar threshold and just spend right down to their last hundred bucks because they just keep thinking oh there's got to be a way they can stay in the Philippines you know stay living abroad as an expat well by that time now they've got a real problem on their hands they have no income and it's not like they're gonna get a job in the Philippines uh, again I don't want to go into all the details but suffice it to say you're not going to just take whatever skill you have and go out there and start making some money. For one thing, you need a work permit. For another thing, the pay you're going to get, you're not going to get paid extra because you're a foreigner. You're going to get paid the same rate that Filipinos are getting. And good luck even getting that. You know, you're, you're, let's say that you went to work for a call center. You're looking, if you got a work permit, then you're looking at working six days a week. Uh, and again, depending on what job you got, eh, maybe you make four to five hundred a month but you're going to have one day off. You're really not going to be, I mean, you're going to be stuck. And that's assuming you could get that job. You know, again, there's no guarantee that you're going to get that job. So uh, getting down to that minimal level, I recommend $3,000. If you're down to your last $3,000 with no income, it's time to go home. You know, don't, don't keep ignoring it. Don't think that it's, it's going to work out somehow. You know, uh, you just need to go home. At least there you can earn an income but it's not going to happen there in the Philippines for the most part. You're going you're gonna to really, really be up against the wall. And when you're down to your last hundred bucks, good luck going online and trying to earn money online and make it, make it all happen before the end of the week. You know, again, don't procrastinate and put yourself in that position. Now, the next thing I want to look at is in John's, you know, arc of his story, um, he went you know everything got crit hit a critical mass and next thing you know he's just sorta of sleeping on the beach and runs into Paul now as I mentioned I've run into guys I remember one I got to the uh, the mall early there on Bohol this was back in 2013 and the mall hadn't opened yet and there was this expat laying there big heavy set guy kinda looked like he was from the UK uh, heavy set you know, button shirt was open, uh, no shoes, just laid out, sleeping. Didn't have a knapsack of any belongings, just, just there, just uh, sleeping on the the steps of the mall. Um, you know, there's another guy that I didn't meet, but um, I saw him on YouTube, and this was about six, seven years ago, and he was just out there panhandling uh, in Cebu. And I saw some of the videos of him, and you might recognize him. He would walk around with a Bible, you know, and just sort of as a prop, and would go around, and, and he was panhandling from Filipinos. And there were, there were, you know, Filipinos that felt sorry for him and were helping him out. There was another guy in Cebu. Um, you may have seen him uh, years ago. 
uh, he was on a video and these and it was from a Filipino who put it on their channel talking to him trying to find out do you have any family do you have anybody to call anybody anything and the guy you know was there uh, because he was walking around with no shoes uh, in the city um, he had gotten some kind of a, a fungus or something an infection and cuts on his feet so he was he couldn't even walk around he was just kind of hobbled away there in a, a corner like you know in, in, in a, along the street there and again some Filipinos would feel sorry for him and give him a little money but he was getting by just on whatever he could get rice and two-for-one burgers for 35 pesos or whatever so um, now here again getting back to John uh, his situation um, what happens is uh, a guy who who doesn't heed the previous warnings and now he's at that 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 rock bottom level in John's case he was so lucky and so fortunate that he happened to bump into Paul and that Paul was kind enough to go out of his way to gather help for this guy. And I can tell you, I've been part of the core group that is behind the scenes. I, I talk to John and the core group. We have our own you know, uh, group that is just for us to continue to encourage John, you know, to, with the uh, recovery of the situation and all that. And, um, and I can tell you that John was so lucky to stumble upon this situation where guys are willing to help him. And again, for those, if you haven't followed John, uh, Paul's uh, channel, basically at this point now, John is, has been back in the United States Everybody got him back to the United States about three, four days ago, actually a little longer. And he's now actively got uh, a small apartment. Um, he's got the bus schedules. He's getting his bank account set up. It's all, Actually, that's already set up. He's, he's making a lot of progress right away and has already done a few job interviews and has some more leads to work on. So he has gone from nothing, sleeping on the beach in the Philippines with no money to get home, to having a whole lot of help, a lot of help, a lot of hours, a lot of encouragement, a lot of straight talk from Paul, the guys, myself, to tell, to give him direction, and and that is that is something you cannot count on happening for you. Now again, John was very lucky, but you know what? There's a lot of guys out there that are in his situation, and there simply is not. The crowdfunding to help out every one of these guys. Do not expect that you're just going to, you know, contact some vlogger and he's going to garner together all this help to save the day. More than likely, that's not going to happen. You know, again, there's just too many guys that are in that situation, and and really, it's it's a sort of situation where I am really glad to see that these guys have stepped forward, and I can honestly say these guys have gone the extra 10 miles for John to get him safely back home and looking for a job. And that that is something that you just can't count on happening, you know, like just tell yourself, well, I'll just, you know, if everything goes, goes you know, to the bottom, I'll just call up so-and-so vlogger and they'll they'll get me back home, you know. No, don't expect that. You know, don't expect that. In fact, one of the key things as Paul and I were constructing how to best help John, uh, I, I spoke with Paul and, and I, I told him, I said, well, you know, we're not, this group is not an ongoing eternal welfare program. We cannot support John all the way till he gets his social security. And we can't uh, handle every emergency that's coming up with his kids and all. We need to establish a line in the sand that the assistance will end on August 31st. Now, here it is mid-August, and he's already back in the United States again, looking for a job and all that. So do not count on the cavalry coming in to save the day. That was a minor miracle, and just don't count on that. Prevent the situation from happening. You know, again, you, you, can, you may see one of these guys and bump across him, and you may give him you know, two, three, maybe 500 pesos, whatever, to get them through the day. But 
most people are not going to take in that guy and then crowdsource and get a couple thousand dollars to fly him back home and, and all that. It's just not going to happen most of the time. So don't let yourself get to that point. The final thing to be learned here is now that John is back in the United States, and again, thank God for all the guys that have been been there for him and this is daily daily we do a video call with him and check up on him make sure he's being busy with the interviews that he's got groceries and all this and arranging all the pragmatics of a bus ticket route to get around to do jobs and all that um, even if you get yourself back home I mean he's lucky to have this support group but this is why I say you should have at least three thousand dollars to get yourself back home because you're going to now, hopefully you've got family that you can, you can stay on their couch or something or a friend. Hopefully you've got that. Because if not, and even if you do, you need money to clean yourself up, put on some decent clothes, go out there, apply for jobs, work out transportation. You're going to need operating money to get back on your feet. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a homeless shelter. And a lot of these guys in homeless shelters, they don't make it out. They end up in just going in circles, just living day to day, week to week. So, you know, consider that. If you're going to get back to the States and try and, or back to your home country and get your life back together from ground zero, do that when your, your savings still is at like 3000 So you at least got something to work with so that when you land in your home country, you walk out of the airport, you got taxi money to get to wherever you're going to stay. Uh, again, tr you can work out some kind of transportation, you know, all you're going to need money to get back on your feet. So I hope you find that helpful. Again, I'm very, uh, I, I can't say enough about the core group that has been helping out John. Again, I don't want to go through all their names. I don't want to leave anybody out, but I also don't want to just, you know, infringe on their privacy. But um, they've all done uh, just an outstanding job just uh, helping him out, you know, and they didn't know him from Adam. They just, they were just, you know, concerned for a fellow expat and were willing to, to help him out. So hope you find that helpful and love to hear your comments there in the comment section.